While others are concerned about economies entering recession and markets collapsing, Elon Musk is concerned that his rocket company, SpaceX, will fail to complete its foundational mission, getting to Mars. Before we continue, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to never miss out on any of our latest Space Nice videos. In this video, we will discuss Elon Musk's upsetting tweet in which he stated, If we don't improve our pace of progress, I'm definitely going to be dead before we go to Mars, Musk said Monday at the Satellite 2020 conference in Washington. If it's taken us 18 years to get ready to do the first people to orbit, we've got to improve our rate of innovation or, based on past trends, I'm definitely going to be dead before Mars. In previous interviews, the 48-year-old CEO of both Tesla and Space Exploration Technologies has been much more optimistic about the chance of humans becoming a multiplanetary species, as he puts it. In November 2018, he told Recode that his company, SpaceX, aimed to reach Mars in 2024, and he told Axios that there was a 70% chance he would go. However, SpaceX, which was founded in 2002, has had more difficult time than anticipated completing its first missions to send astronauts to the International Space Station for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The first such voyage is set to take place this spring, much later than NASA and its contractor had hoped. Boeing, which is also attempting to fly astronauts for the U.S. Space Agency, is trailing even further. Unless we improve our rate of innovation dramatically, then there's no chance of a base on the moon or a city on Mars, Musk said. This is my biggest concern. A one-way trip to Mars would take about nine months, according to NASA. If you wanted to make a road trip, it would take about 21 months because you would have to wait about three months on Mars to ensure that Earth and Mars are in a stable location to make the trip back home. We examine how long a trip to Mars would take using current technology, as well as some of the factors that would influence your travel time. In theory, the closest Earth and Mars would come together would be when Mars is closest to the Sun, perihelion, and Earth is farther away, aphelion. The planets would only be 33.9 million miles, or 54.6 million kilometers apart. This, however, has never occurred in recorded history. The two planets made their closest recorded approach in 2003, when they were only 34.8 million miles, 56 million kilometers apart. When the two planets are at their farthest distances from the sun, they are on opposite sides of the star. They could be 250 million miles, or 401 million kilometers apart. Earth and Mars are 140 million miles apart on average, 225 million kilometers. Light travels at the speed of about 186,282 miles per second, 299,792 kilometers per second. As a result, a light emitted from the surface of Mars would take the following time to reach Earth, or vice versa. Closest possible approach, 182 seconds, or 3.03 minutes. Closest recorded approach, 187 seconds, or 3.11 minutes. Farthest approach, 1,342 seconds, or 22.4 minutes. On average, 751 seconds, or just over 12.5 minutes. NASA's Parker Solar Probe continues to break its own speed records as it approaches the Sun. During its 10th close flyby of our star on November 21, 2021, the Parker Solar Probe reached the top speed of 101 miles, or 163 kilometers, per second. If the Parker Solar Probe achieved the speeds achieved during the 10th close flyby of the Sun and deviated from its Sun-focused mission to travel in a straight line from Earth to Mars, the time it would take to get there would be closest possible approach, 93 hours, Closest recorded approach, 95 hours. Farthest approach, 686 hours, or 28.5 days. On average, 384 hours, 16 days. Future Martian colonies would require vast amounts of food, but bringing an endless stream of foodstuffs from Earth would be costly and dangerous due to the distance and time required to reach Mars. The best solution to this conundrum is to grow food in a greenhouse designed specifically for that purpose. However, such a system would almost certainly necessitate a large amount of topsoil as a growing medium for the plants. Water to supply a hydroponic system would probably be in short supply. Researchers at the University of Georgia, UGA, created a series of artificial soil mixtures that resemble Mars topsoil. These Martian regolith substitute samples were made up of soil, clay, salts, and other materials found on the planet's surface. Greenhouses on Mars will necessitate a large amount of fertile soil. So how do we make it out of the material that is already on Mars? The samples were examined by scientists in order to determine how fertile Mars's ruddy surface might be. Simulating the mineral makeup or salt content of these Martian mixtures can tell us a lot about the soil's potential fertility. Nutrients, salinity, and pH are all part of what makes the soil fertile. And understanding where Mars' soil will fall 
on that spectrum is critical to know if they are viable. If not, if there are viable solutions that can be used to make them viable, explained Laura Fakrell, UGA geologist, doctoral candidate, and lead author on the study. NASA is planning to land the first humans on Mars in the mid to late 2030s, but this crew would return to Earth as soon as possible. This group of explorers would be able to bring all of the food they would need for them on their journey. Elon Musk and SpaceX have the most ambitious plan to colonize Mars, with plans to launch 100,000 colonists every 26 months. By 2050, the team hopes to have 1 million people on Mars' surface. Large-scale farming on Mars would necessitate the creation of substantial Martian agricultural infrastructure and production methods. Despite its thin atmosphere and cold temperatures, Mars' upper crust contains many nutrients required by plants, such as nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. The presence of these chemical compounds in soil, however, does not imply that the growing medium is suitable for crops. Another concern is whether or not these essential soil components are available to plants. Soil on Mars is known to contain the majority of the plant's essential nutrients, but many questions about the benefits, for example bioavailability of present nutrients, and limitations, for example extent of toxins, of Martian soil as a plant growth medium remain unanswered. Researchers write in a study published in the journal Icarus. Simulated Martian soil is dry and crusty, prompting researchers to enrich the medium with beneficial bacteria and fungi. Specific types of bacteria and fungi are known to be beneficial to plants and may be able to support them under stress conditions like those seen on Mars, Fakrell explained. This new study could help farmers on Earth who want to grow food in difficult environments in addition to assisting in the future colonization of Mars. Musk began speaking about 40 minutes after Tesla closed down 14% to $608 on Monday, the lowest in roughly six weeks, as new coronavirus fears spelled the worst day for U.S. stocks since 2008. The stocks recovered along with the broader market on Tuesday, closing up 2.8% at 11.20 a.m. in New York. The billionaire downplayed the importance SpaceX places on publicly listing its own stock. Starting this year, Starlink, the company's burgeoning satellite business, plans to beam broadband to consumers who don't have internet or have slow service. While Gwen Shotwell, SpaceX's COO, said last month in a private investor event in Miami that Starlink was likely to be spun off and taken public without providing a time frame. Musk said the company was doing zero thinking about an IPO. Instead, the emphasis is on ensuring that the service, which is dependent on low Earth orbit satellite constellation, will function properly. Can you guess how many LEO constellations did not fail? Zero he said, before listing companies such as Iridium, Orbcom, Globalstar, and Teledesic. All we want to be is in the non-bankrupt category. That's our intention. So that's all there is for today. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I hope to see you again soon with more information.